signal gasoline. Let every traffic signal remind you, you do go farther with signal gasoline. Yes, you do go farther with signal. The Signal Oil Company and your neighborhood signal dealer bring you another curious story by The Whistler. Tonight, The Master's Tree. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. There's an old adage about letting sleeping dogs lie. But sometimes that's not so easy. Sometimes they won't lie still. Sometimes they walk in the night. We might have warned Alice Towers and the people of the little English village of Wickley about that, but they probably wouldn't have noticed. The mysterious disappearance of Philip Towers five years ago was all but forgotten, and the flood that had just engulfed the surrounding countryside was still the main topic of conversation. And that was when Alice Towers came home, arriving at the little station on the 1015 road. Miss Alice! Oh, Miss Ellis? Yes? Oh, it's Anthony. Dear old Anthony. Welcome home, Miss Ellis. Oh, thank you, Anthony. Oh, it's so glad to hear that welcome after all these years, Miss Alice. Even after I married, I was always Miss Alice to you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. You didn't mind, did you? Oh, of course not, Anthony. And it's good to see you. Miss Mildred sent me down to meet you. She and Mr. Jeffrey be waiting at home. <sighs> the weather be so miserable. Oh, of course, of course. I wouldn't have had them chance a cold. You've had very bad weather for some time now. Aye, aye, the flood was terrible. Here, let me take your bags to the car. Oh, yes, these are all, I think. We can get the trunks tomorrow. This way, Mum. <laughs> you know, I'm just as glad that they didn't come. Now I can have a talk with you alone. How are they? Have they been all right, Anthony? Well, Mum, as, as well as can be expected. Why, what do you mean? Well, with Mr. Philip and you gone, and Mr. Philip was always Miss Mildred's favorite brother... And then when he married you, you were the favorite of all of us. Oh, thank you, Anthony. It's been a long time, Miss Ellen. Yes. Five years, Anthony. Five years. And uh, what about uh, Mr. Philip? I've never found a trace, Anthony. Oh. For five years, I've searched two continents. Not a trace. It just disappeared from the face of the earth. I can't understand it. Nobody can. He was so fine a man. And you were such a happy, devoted couple. Yes. We were happy. Here, Mum. The car's right over here. It's still yes. raining. Uh, hurry and you won't get wet. Oh, yes, of course. I'll, I'll slide in on your side, eh? Yes. Uh, I'll put the bags in the back. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. I'll have you in front of a roaring fire at Miss Mildred's in a jiffy. <laughs> so, Anthony, you're... You're still taking care of Mildred's place? Aye, just as I used to take care of your gardens at the master's place. Oh, he thought so much of you, Anthony. You were one of his favorite people. Maybe, Mum. That was because he loved flowers and trees so much, and so do I. <sighs> I mind how he used to sit out in the gardens all day. You and the master used to sit under that cherry tree on the edge of the cliff there and look out at the sea, and I'd bring you tea out there. Yes. That was Philip's favorite tree. Besides, I think he loved it almost more than anything. Maybe so. He was strange in some way. Is, is the cherry tree still there? Why, uh, uh, yes, ma'am, I, I think so. I, I don't rightly know. I didn't notice it when I went out to look after the flood. Was there much damage? Oh, yes, ma'am, frightful. The brook, the brook that went by the house, it tore up everything. The garden, the orchard... Even the house was badly hit. Oh, no. Oh, the topsoil's gone, the ground uprooted. Oh, Anthony, I want to go out there. Why, of course, Mum, I'll take you out to look it over, but 
It's not a pretty sight anymore. No, Anthony, I mean... I'm going out there to live. Oh, no, Mum. Why, yes, it's... Why uh, not? Well, it's badly damaged. Well, we can fix the damage. Oh, but Miss Alice... It, it's it, what? Well, well, it's like a dead place. A dead place? I don't know how to tell you, but... Uh, there's something queer there. It's almost like a smell of death over it. And since you left, it's been vacant these five years. Well, with Mr. Phillips' disappearance... What and... are you trying to say, Anthony? Well, it's just that... Well, you know how these village people talk. Oh, you mean they decided it's haunted? Well, somewhat like that, Mum. Oh, Anthony. You know they say that about any vacant house out on the moors. Yes, I know, but... But nonsense, Anthony, nonsense. I'm going back to the master's house. And I'm going to live there. All right, Mum. But somehow, I, I don't like it. Whistler fans, can you answer this question? Who brings you the Whistler? I hope you said Signal Oil Company. We asked that same question four weeks ago, and we were pleased to learn that so many of you gave the right answer. Frankly, we were surprised in view of the fact that the Whistler has been adding so many new listeners each week. You see, the Whistler is now the most popular Pacific Coast program, thanks to your interest. And naturally, we of the cast want all of you to know our sponsor. For you new Whistler fans, if you have trouble remembering names but can remember faces, let me give you this tip. Visualize for a second the Signal Oil trademark, the black circle sign with the yellow letter spelling Signal Gasoline that so conspicuously identifies a signal service station. It will pay you to remember that circle sign when you need gasoline, because that is the station that supplies the gasoline that does go farther. Ration coupons are precious these days, so do as thousands of motorists do who keep a record of mileage, and discover for yourself that Signal Gasoline is the gasoline that does go farther. And now, back to the Whistler. Alice Towers, back in the English village of Wickley after an unsuccessful five-year search for her missing husband, Philip, has announced her intention of going back to the lonely old Towers home by the sea, against the advice of old Anthony the gardener and Philip's sister and brother, Mildred and Geoffrey. It's utterly ridiculous, Alice. You can stay right here in the village with us. Well, of course, Alice. We've made all the arrangements for you. You can spend the rest of your days here with us, if you wish. Surely you understand. The old place out there is my home. It's where Philip brought me as a bride. It's where we spent so many happy hours together. But it's not the lovely place it was then. Perhaps not. And Philip is not there either, but... But living there, I'll have my memories of him. I'll feel close to him. I don't understand you, Ellis. You're not the type of woman to brood. You're much too matter-of-fact to go on spending your life living with a... Ghost. Jeffrey. Well, what would you call this, this compulsion to bury oneself out there on the moors? I don't know, Jeffrey. I only know I must go. And that's enough for me. If Alice feels she must go, then we will lend her every assistance. We can drive out there tomorrow and look it over. See what must be done. Anthony can help, and we'll stay with you until you're settled. Thank you, Mildred. Well, not at all, my dear. Now I'm going to bed. You two can stay up till all hours if you wish. Good night, Jeffrey. Good night, Mildred. Good night, my dear Alice. It's good. Very good to have you back. Thank you, dear. Good night. Well, Alice? Well, Geoffrey? Your mind's made up? Yes. Nothing I can say will stop you. Why do you want to stop me, Geoffrey? Because I fear for you, Alice. I fear for your staying alone in that godforsaken old place. Oh, come now. You're not going to tell me the ghost stories, are you? Not the kind they mean, of course. But there are other kinds of ghosts, Alice. Ghosts of the mind. What do you mean? I only mean it's not good for a young, attractive, vital woman to bury herself in a lonely past. You need life, not death. Death? But we don't know that Philip is dead. Well, there doesn't seem much doubt of it now, does there? At any rate, he might as well be, as far as you're concerned. 
Jeffrey, why don't you want me to live there? I've just told you. Besides, the place is ruined, unlivable. It'll take months to fix it up. There must be a reason. A better reason than all of this. Perhaps there is, Alice. You never liked Philip very much, did you? No. You were the only one who ever noticed that. You even hated him, didn't you? Sometimes. And why not? Why should I have loved a brother who always got the best of it? The family fortune, the home out there, the adoration of everyone. And the only woman I ever loved. Oh, Jeffrey. You needn't look so surprised, Alice. You knew it even then. Perhaps you liked it a little secretly. Sometimes I thought you might even return my feeling. You were my husband's brother. But sometimes it seemed your affection was more than that. It was, it was your imagination, I Jeffrey. I think not. Now, Alice, I've waited five long years for you to come back. Now that you have, I won't let you go so easily again. I won't let you go out there and bury yourself in the past. Living, Philip stood between us. Dead, I won't let him stand between us any longer. Jeffrey, could it be that you're trying desperately to keep me away from that house? Because of something you're afraid I might find? You're suggesting I might have done away with Philip? No, Alice. I hated him, but I couldn't have killed him. I've told you my only motive, Alice. I love you. I want you to forget Philip, the past, that house, and be my wife. If you go out to that house, you're lost to me. And perhaps to the world. <laughs> Well, Alice, your homecoming is not quite as simple as it might appear to the villagers of Wickley. It begins to take on something of the qualities of a nightmare, doesn't it? Haunted houses and secret motives for perhaps murder. It promises to be very interesting. But then you don't frighten easily, do you? And you've made up your mind. So the next day, bright and early, you all drive out to the lonely house on the cliff. Day, anyway. Blasted, Mildred, why did you have to bring that dog along? He's off again. He's liable to get into anything. Oh, never mind, Jeffrey. Prince can take care of himself. Besides, he loves to run around the old place. Let him. Oh, my. Just look at that. You see, Miss Alice, the water did a lot of damage. Oh, yes, but the house isn't as bad as I expected. I could live in it just as it stands. Oh, it wouldn't be very comfortable, Alice. Oh, dear, no. But if Alice insists, we can fix it up. Oh, dear. Just look at the garden while there's nothing left. No, Mum. It would have broken the master's heart to see this. Yes. But the stream must have been diverted right through here. Yes, practically dug a new channel right through the garden and over the cliff down there. Took a lot of earth with it, right into the sea. Why, well, Alice, where are you going? Why, well, just down by the cliff for a moment. Why don't you and Jeffrey go on back to the house? Be careful down there. The ground's still soggy and lively to give way. Oh, I'll be, I'll be careful. Anthony will take care of me. Aye, Mum. Oh, it'd be like a wasteland. There, now, uh, watch your foot in, Miss Alice. Oh, thank you. Miss Alice, watch your step. Oh, dear. Ah. There'll be no need to worry. It'll be there all right. What? The tree. The master's cherry tree by the cliff. I looked while you was in the house. The ground be all dug up around there. But the tree be still safe. I must see it. Aye, mum. Right there behind the big rock. There. Right there. Anthony. Strange. It's very strange. What, mum? It's in bloom. Everything else on the estate is ruined and dead. The cherry tree is in bloom. Stop, Miss Ellis. Don't he go out there? That ground be loose and might give way. And it's a hundred feet down to the rocks. Oh, yes, yes, of course. It's enough to see that anyway that the tree is there. Philip's tree is there. And in bloom. <laughs> That might be some sort of omen, mightn't it, Alice? But for good or ill, who can say? At any rate, you decide to stay. Move in right now. 
Jeffrey and Mildred protest. But when they can't dissuade you, they offer to stay for a night or two with you and help to get the house fixed. They send Anthony into the village for linen and food. And after dinner, you all make the beds and settle down for the night. But there are strange noises as the old house rocks in the wind. And you can't sleep very well, can you, Alice? And so, in the early light of dawn, you're up and about. And you're not the only one. Uh, now what be that blasty dog up to? Down where the cliffy be, too. Bad enough having to get up early without having the plain nurse made to a blooming dog. Like he be stuck in crevasse or something. Must be down by cherry tree. Bad blasty dog. Like... Oi, miss me. Miss Alice. Oh, Anthony, I... I didn't think anyone was up yet. Quiet, friends, quiet, please. Come on, doggy, come on. What on earth be you doing down here all by yourself this time of day? Oh, I don't know, Anthony. I, I, I couldn't sleep. So I just walked out here to look at the ocean and see it the way Philip and I used to. Now, Miss Alice, it's been good for you to grieve, so... I'm all right, Anthony. And look at your dress. All covered with mud. Oh, well, I slipped on the path. Oh, shame. And such a nice dress. It's all right, Anthony. Oh, but it bains. I know what you was going to do. You come down here to sit under the tree and stare and dream, just like the master used to do. How quiet he used to be off in his dreams. A body could have walked up behind him and bashed him one before he knew it. Anthony! Oh, oh. I beg your pardon, Mum. I forgot myself for the moment. I... I wasn't thinking to what I was saying. It's no matter. No you matter. had me so upset that you coming out here and... But uh... why, Anthony? Why shouldn't I come out here? Why don't you want me to get near the tree? Uh, why, why? Oh, 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 only because, Mummy, it may not safe. Remember, I told you this soft ground. Oh, yes, of course. Look! Oh, that blasty dog, he's gone and started digging under Master's... Anthony, tree. stop him! Stop him quickly! You've got to stop him! But why, Mum? Good heavens, have you forgotten already? The soft ground you just told me about! Prince! Prince, come back! Prince! Prince! Good doggy! Good doggy, good dog, Prince! Anthony! You must keep him away from here from now on! You hear? You must keep him away from here! You must keep him away from here! Don't he worry about that! Now, why should that chance meeting with old Anthony bother you, Alice? But it does, doesn't it? It seemed to strengthen some vague fear you had before you couldn't understand. Now you're beginning to, aren't you, Alice? Because now it's growing into suspicion and terror. Later that day, you have another conversation with Anthony that doesn't help much either. I saw you just like he told me to get workmen from the village to come up and help us rebuild the place. But I couldn't get none. But why not? We'll pay them well. Oh, but that'd be nothing to do with it, Mum. They just won't come. Not for any price. Oh, now, Anthony, we're not going to let village ghost stories upset our oh, plans. Oh, Miss Alice, I tried to tell them there was nothing to stories. But they won't come. They do say so much... Well, so much mysterious is about the place. And they've heard about cherry tree a blooming there on the cliff when the rest of the place be in ruins. That only makes them more sure that... Uh, that what? Uh, well, they, they do say... I, I, I mean, some folks think the master never did leave here. That he be here now, alive or dead. Oh. Mm, I'm sorry, Mum. I, I, I didn't mean to frighten you. It's all right. It's all right. What do they think happened to him? Will there be some talk that he might have been murdered? Do you think he was murdered, Anthony? No, Mum. Do you? No, of course not. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Alice. Perhaps I shouldn't have said nothing. It was only that those men refused to we'll come. We'll talk and... about it tomorrow, Anthony. Yes, Mum. What is it? Alice. But Alice, what are you staring at? What is that? Oh, that? Oh, my dear, that's nothing to get so excited about. Well, it's just an old walking stick that, that Geoffrey found half buried in the mud out in the garden. Yes, I dare say. It's Philip's old stick. Didn't get all the mud off it. But Alice, mm. are you well? Sit down. Well, of course, dear. 
dear. Yeah. What is it? Um, Why should this old walking stick give you such a start? Well, I, I couldn't find it after, after he left. I've always naturally supposed he took it with him. It was just seeing it here. Oh, my dear, my dear. Well, how inconsiderate of us not to have thought. I'm so dreadfully sorry. It's all right, Mildred. It's, it's all not right. all right, Alice. Can't you see what this house is doing to you? Only two days here and you'll... Jump is a cat. Jeffrey! You've got to get out of here. Forget the whole thing before you crack up. Alice, for once I'm beginning to agree with Jeffrey. Please, dear, won't you come home with us? I can't leave. I mustn't. I can't understand why not. I'm beginning not to understand you at all, Alice. Jeffrey's right. It's perfectly obvious that Philip's gone. Gone forever. And therefore it's... Well, it's silly and stupid of you not to go on with your life without him. Mildred, please! I don't know why you two and all of you can't let me alone. What is it you want of me? Why can't you let me alone? Alice, my dear. Come yes. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Well, Alice, you letting all this talk of Philip's ghost get you down? You can't do that, you know. You can't go to pieces like this. After all, it's only in your mind, isn't it? This fear, the fear that's growing. You've got to stop it. Perhaps when the others have gone. Yes. And they're going. They're going to give you your wish to be let alone. They've already packed and Jeffrey's come to say good night. Yes, Jeffrey? It's raining again, isn't it? Yes. More of a cliff will break away. Fall into the sea tonight. Alice, for heaven's sake. Don't you see you must get away from here? Won't you please reconsider? Consider. I'll say it again. I love you. I want you to come away with me. Be my wife. Forget all this. Become once again the loving, gay, lovely girl I once knew. Will you? No, Jeffrey, no. I might have once, but not now. Not yet. Maybe later. No, Alice. If you don't leave this house now, you never will. I can promise you that. What do you mean by that? I mean that very shortly you'll be quite mad. Or dead. I don't understand. I don't understand either why you must stay. Why you feel you must find out whatever it is you must find out. All you need do is forget the past, and all will be well. If I could believe that. Very well, Alice. I must go. Mildred's waiting in the car. Anthony will drive us in and then come back. Mildred insists that he stay. You can't be here alone all night. I'll walk to the door with you. Alice. Good night, Chester. Goodbye, Alice. Prince, come here. Hey, the dog, sir. He'll be off digging under Master's cherry tree again. What? Must have some choice morsel there. I can't get him to call. What? I'll get him. Prince! Prince! Here, Prince! Boy, looky, there he comes. You must have a way with him, that one, sir. Now, look at him, flying up the path. Yes. Well, but look there. He's got something in his mouth. No wonder he was digging. Come here, boy. Oh, but look at that. The biggest bone I ever saw. Well, Prince... No! Alice. No! Yes, sir. Alice, what is it? Oh, no. Forgive me, Philip. Forgive me. Alice, what are you saying? Forgive me. I didn't know what I was doing. Sir, look at that. I didn't know. I didn't know. I thought I hated you, Philip. I thought I hated you. And that day when I came up behind you, I had the walking stick in my hand. You were staring out at the sea. You didn't notice me. And I... I don't know what came over me. I, I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know. Philip. Philip, I'm coming, Philip. I want to tell you why. Oh, I did What is this? Oh, 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 Catch her, Anthony. She's running out. Sir, don't think you're going for the cliff. Why? For the monster's tree. Stop her. Don't try it. Alice. Alice, come back, Alice. Stop her, sir. That be stop ground. Alice. Alice, come. Alice. Too late now, Anthony. The tree, that whole piece of cliff, gone. The whistle.
Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending of tonight's story. Meantime, if you're driving one of today's overage cars, here's an important point to consider. In races, you've no doubt noticed that most of the entrants get off to a pretty good start. But soon, some start dropping behind because they haven't the stamina to keep up. Well, motor oils are like that, too. Most of them are okay for the first few hundred miles. But today, when cars have to last out the duration, your motor needs the full-time protection of an oil that can stand up and take it right through to the last mile. And that's why more and more drivers are switching to Signal Pen, the pure Pennsylvania oil with the fighting film. Signal Pen not only guards moving parts against wear and seals in power, but actual tests show that the fighting film of this super oil doesn't break down, not even under extreme heat. So make your next oil change a change for the better. Stop at Signal's black and yellow circle sign and say, drain and fill her up with Signal Pen Motor Oil. And now, back to the Whistler. Well, at last the mystery of Alice Towers and the house by the sea was cleared up. Alice Towers, the ever-loving wife, had actually killed her husband, Philip, in a fit of rage. Then she buried him under his favorite cherry tree and spent five years abroad, uh, looking for him. His money, of course, had made it pleasant looking. When she returned for a visit, she heard about the flood and began to worry about whether it might have uncovered Philip's grave. She shouldn't have started worrying, because once you start, well, you saw what happened to her. She ended up on the rocks, literally. Jeffrey and Anthony heard her confession, babbled in her delirium, but no one else ever did. Because, you see, nothing could be proved. It was all in her mind. The walking stick had no trace of blood, no trace of crime at all. The bone which the dog dug up and Alice must have been mistaken for one of her late husbands was actually only a large soup bone Anthony had given him the day before. There was left only the tree, the master's tree, blooming in the midst of ruin to be explained. And Anthony had the answer to that, too. I knew how much she thought of that tree. So when the real one was washed away by the flood, together with the earth under it, I planted a new one. That wasn't the master's tree at all. The evidence of her crime was destroyed long ago. Next Monday at 9 o'clock, The Whistler will bring you another strange tale. The curious story of accident according to plan. The Whistler is broadcast for your entertainment by the marketers of Signal Gasoline and Motor Oil and fine quality automotive accessories and by your neighborhood Signal dealer. This program directed by George W. Allen with tonight's story by Larry Roman and John Dunkel, music by Wilbur Hatch, is transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Marvin Miller speaking, and suggesting that you let every traffic signal remind you that you do go farther with signal gasoline. Yes, you do go farther with signal. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>